Hello everybody, welcome back again. This is another league with Wurza. This is my third video with Four Color Wurza. And I like this list that I've been playing. I have not changed a card uh, yet in these last few events I've played in. The cards on my watch list currently are the main deck Assassin's Trophy, the main deck Damping Sphere, and Tireless Tracker. Like Those are the three spots that I'm most willing to change if something better comes up. But otherwise, we got that sweet Magus of the Mood sideboard tack. We have one trophy in the main. And otherwise, it's a pretty standard four-color Wurza deck. So let's run this. All right, so we're on the draw. We have two lands, two cantrips, Urza, and a powerful hate piece against certain matchups and a stone brick and others so I'm gonna run this we're on the draw the biggest point of potential friction I see in this hand is that it wants both black and red mana All right, and we found red mana okay so we live on that's cool drawing bobble means we don't have to discard to for Goblin Guide, and we can still get another trigger out of this Galvanic Blast. Right, so we definitely want to keep drawing cards. Lightning Bolt. I should fetch now because I only have one red source I can get off Prismatic Vista. And I would hate to draw it off this bobble. All right, the bonus guide. All right. We know they just drew a bolt. Thopter Foundry is our top card. That's a good one. It's awkward we got Mountain last turn. We can't jam Foundry here on two, but I think it should be okay. All right, they're down to two cards in hand already. I'm going to play Wellspring and not Damping Sphere because Damping Sphere doesn't do a whole lot. And as far as find, navigating out of this game, I think I'm going to need multiple spells in a turn more than they are. Pyrite's Bob Bomb was a really good draw. That's another answer to Goblin Guide. So we're going to 12. This puts us to 9. They can attack us to 7. Yuck. Eidolon, of course, it's Eidolon. Alright, so I play Spell Bomb. I take two. I'm at eight, six, three, two. Alright, if they have like any two cards, basically, I lose here. I guess I should bomb this Eidolon now and get this Bobble cantrip in. Show me a land. All right. They're drawing a land. So you're saying there's a chance. They have one unknown card. If it does three damage, we're dead. All right. We're dead. Got burnt. I think we win that game on the play. Maybe I'm making that up. <laughs> Definitely being on the draw is rough, and being a matchup where Damping Sphere is irrelevant also stung a little. All right, so Collective Brutality, that's what this card is for. This is the matchup we want. Fatal Push, got to get that removal. 
And I like Tezzeret because it can gain a bunch of life suddenly. Like if you have a clear window to stick Tezzeret, you plus him right away. They either have to kill you, kill Tezzeret, or they're going to lose X life and you gain X life. Where X is twice the number of artifacts you control. So basically has to spend one win the game. That can be disrupted by basically any burn spell. And against burn, most of these one ofs don't actually do anything. Damn things for Pythe Needle, Needle and uh, Nile Spellbomb. None of those are at their best here. Don't think we want Trophy either. We have. Fatal Push, Galvanic Blast, and Pyrite Spell Bomb that kill Eidolon. And Eidolon is the only card that we'd really want to kill. Burn tends to play Rest in Peace, but not Stony Silence. They play Smash to Smithereens in their Artifact Destruction slot. So that's why I don't really care about Assassin's Trophy. Because we should be able to be at a Rest in Peace under normal circumstances. Though that does make Goblin Engineer a little worse. Right, there's the deck. Okay, so we have basically the perfect hand here. It's one colored mana source away. Like we have turn two collective brutality and an easy card to discard in Sword of the Meek. They're drawing Searing Blaze, which is still on their deck. Okay, there's our second colored mana to get Thopter Foundry into play. Spoiked. Take this opportunity to get the Shock Land into play. And I'm going to cast Sword of the Meek here. The reason I'm casting Sword and not Thopter Foundry... Wait, I lied. I think I want a Collective Brutality here. Discarding Sword of the Meek. I don't want to play Foundry this turn because that gives them a wide open chance to gack it with a... With a... Uh, Smash the Smithereens, but I can Brutality them for Duress Mode and Gain 2 Life Mode and hopefully mess with this. Alright, so Searing Blaze, Skewer, Lightning Bolt, Boros Charm, Eidolon. Eidolon's a bummer. We're going to have to take four to that thing. But I'm not... Oh, no. We have Fatal Push. Never mind. So we're going to have to take two to Eidolon. But Boros Charm deals four. They don't have white mana, though. Lightning Bolt is their most efficient thing left in their hand. I'm going to take that. Yeah, no white mana is pretty decent. I was just drawing Goblin Guide. Thopter Foundry is on top of my deck. Okay. This has to be a skewer. Alright, so I can play Arkham's Astrolabe and Thopter Foundry. Or I could play Thopter Foundry and sack it to itself to get back sword and play the other foundry next turn. That doesn't make any sense. All right, let's hope they didn't find Smash to Smithereens in their one draw step we don't know about. Oh, okay. They shoved Eidolon when we have the combo on board. We should be able to take this over. We're not going to cast any more spells this game. Uh, 
I'm just gonna get my mountain just in case. So that turns on Searing Blaze. That turns on Boros Charm. They still don't have attacks, really. Unless they want to attack with their own Eidolon to get rid of it, which might be a reasonable line at this point. Helix targeting me, so in response, I'll make a bunch of things. We know their whole hand, we know this is safe. All right, they scooped it up, because we can start attacking next turn, and we they still have no attacks. They're still under Eidolon, and we're crunching for five in the air. That one worked out well. Thank you, Collective Brutality, for paving the way. I don't think anything changes about the sideboard plan here. Nope, still in. So this hand has a turn two Foundry and turn three Urza, but it doesn't have any specific sideboard cards, so I'm going to keep this and hope that we have a little bit of breathing room. Let me get Opal into play before they cast Eidolon. Smashed my Opal. That's fine. Something was going to get smashed. Let's hope they don't have two of those. Though having a hand with multiple smashes would make sense that they kept a hand with no turn one plays. Spike. Skewer. We're at eight. They have two cards in their hand. So I can pass here. I can whir for two in the end step to get the sword, untap, smash Urza, and gain infinite life. Oh, them drawing a card there is really nice. Okay, please don't have smash to smithereens. If they have smash, they're probably going to win. If they don't, I'm going to win. Oh no. Okay, they didn't have it right away. All right, so now let's pump the brakes for a second here. If I cast Urza and they smash in response, I could lose. I could also just hold up this gain four engine and try to jam Urza with a little extra room next turn. I think that actually makes more sense. Like maybe you're just supposed to go for it here, but I don't want to just lose to a card that I could play around. Helix. Right, so I'm going to gain some life, make some thops in response. I'm going to leave one mana open in case they draw smash. I want to be able to sacrifice whatever they smash. And I'm at five. They have two cards in their hand. 
god. Do they have exactly two burn spells? Two three mana burn spells? Or er, jeez. Alright. Guess I should have jammed Urza. Oh, I, I think that this line is safer. But yeah, that's really frustrating that their hand was exactly perfect. Ugh. Maybe I'm just supposed to go for it. Like obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. But like the upside is you win the game. The downside is you lose the game, but I lost the game anyway. They didn't miss any land drops along the way, so I had no reason to believe their hand was just three spells. Alright. Should have jammed Urza. Now we know. Alright, so... Upon further reflection, jamming Urza was 100% correct because... If they had smashed to Smithereens, they would have done it in my end step when I was tapped out. Like, if if I stopped to think about that a little more, I outthought myself while at the same time underthinking myself. So they they would have just zapped the thing when I couldn't sack it in response, got there for sure three damage. So that that was definitely a punt all day, every day. Learn from my mistakes, folks. We have a rare turn one active Mox Opal, but nowhere to go with it. My opponent has Shambling Vent, which suggests that they probably have discard spells, so I'm going to bobble them now instead of on my own turn. So if they cast a discard spell, it doesn't get my bobble card. The trophy's a cool draw here, probably. So I could cast the Sword of the Meek. I could also cast this Ensnaring Bridge. Just get that into play, see what happens. They're likely a deck that wants to attack with creatures to win the game. I don't really care about Liliana of the Veil. I can just discard Sword of the Meek for basically free. Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. Abzan Stoneforge. They still haven't played that swamp that we know they have. <laughs> All right, so we're just jamming Arza. Well, fair and square Urza is usually really good against this kind of deck. Looks like they have the path. That's fine. I'm going to float two in response and cast my sword. I could also float... I think this this is probably better. I can float a snow blue and cast astrolabe. Yeah, I don't actually care if sword is in my hand because a discard spell is great for me in that environment. I'll let my giant construct come into play. not going to run that mox out there. I'm not worried about getting my hand empty for ensnaring bridge just now. All 
All right, so that Urza got two cards out of their hand. It was straight up two for one all day. Leave my black untapped so I can cast trophy if I need to. Now batter skull is too big to get under my bridge. And we could just kill it or whatever. Let's Thopter Foundry, Whirr, Urza off the top all pretty much seal this. The Stoneforge Mystic Beats beginning. Is it time to begin the 19 turn clock? Nope. Opponent keeping Stoneforge back. Cast Spell Bomb. I'm probably going to draw a card with this at the end of their next turn. Unless I have to kill something before then. Another thing, is this Feast and Famine? Fire and Ice, okay. That one's scary because no creatures in my deck block it. I don't have Psy or Sahili, so all of my artifact creatures are in fact blue Thopters. All right, this doesn't matter until they kill Bridge, but this is probably a uh, Abrupt Decay deck, yep. So I'm going to trophy the sword. I could have trophied batter skull and then spell bombed the germ also. Though the sword gone, we're just, we have so many top decks that just win the game. We get another look. There we go. All right, so now we're going to race Batter Skull versus lots of Thopters. Oh, more equipment? My God. They have so many. Feast and Famine. All right. I can block that one. Oh, they do get to gain six life every turn. It's a lot of life. Oh, all right. They didn't want to play through that. I appreciate that because I am going to win this eventually. It's just going to take a very long time. All right. So they are Abzan. So they could have Rest in Peace and or Stony Silence. They have a Stoneforge package with at least three weapons in it, which makes Stony Silence pretty awkward. But that certainly doesn't mean they don't have it because people... Build weird deck sometimes. Magnus of the Moon is kind of an interesting one. They had a lot of non-basics. They showed us a swamp, but they drew that naturally. They didn't fetch for it. I think I might pass on Magus this game, but if there's a game three when I might be able to cheese them on the play, I'll bring the Magus in there. So I already have eight cards here I'm thinking about. So, Nile Spellbomb. I like cutting opals in these grindy matchups because you never, you basically never want a Lotus Petal. Engineer plays right into Rest in Peace and Surgical Extraction. Chromatic Star gets shut off by Rest in Peace and Stony Silence, which is a huge beating. Damping Sphere doesn't have any text in this matchup. Welding Jar is probably good at quote unquote counters Abrupt Decay, which. 
despite what the words on that card say, usually cannot be countered. I want my removal. I think maybe the second engineer is another cut. Because I would like to try to avoid the graveyard until I'm ready to win. Like this deck could have scavenging ooze, surgical extraction, rest in peace. That's a lot of ways for engineer to just go wrong. So we have a rock solid slow hand here. Like Astrolabe finds another card, two Urzas, so we're we have some resistance to thought seize. Trophy can mess with the with their threats, so I like this hand. Alright, now we're super immune to Thoughtseize. We're super dead to Thoughtseize Surgical, though. My god. Let's not let that happen. I like that they didn't do anything on turns 1 or 2. Lingering Souls, okie dokie. Lingering Souls line up pretty poorly against Thopter Sword, but I do need Thopter and Sword before I can have Thopter Sword. Alright, we're halfway there. I'm going to run this out. If they have a decay or whatever, we're going to have to play through it eventually. I can sac chromatic star and make a thopter and draw a card. Their hand's got to be full of removal or hateful permanence or something based on the fact that they haven't done anything yet. Alright, Sony's fine. We have the trophy ready. I'm going to cast Urza next turn. And then try to trophy and win the turn after that. Easily trading off with a spirit here. We are the control deck, they are the beatdown. Just gonna save a little bit of life and hide the fact that I have green spells in my deck for at least a little bit here. Hopefully we don't get thought seized right now. But even if we do, Urza can start firing spells off the top of the deck. We have a pretty real threat. We got backup Urzas. Getting trophied is pretty nice. Because now I can cast Urza and destroy Stony at the same time. So if we draw Sword, we just win. Thought sees. All right, so they have one card left. Let's see what it is. Trophy gone. One, two, three, four, five. I could cast a spell off the top of my deck. I probably should. All right, 
right, steam vents. I've already made a land drop, so steam vents is gone. That's fine. There's only one creature in the graveyard, so Urza can block ooze safely. Or they can just draw Path to Exile. It's fine. We're we're just ramping here. One, two, three, four, five, six. They can put me to five if they want to. Oh, okay. Or they can leave their spirits back. Live in fear of my construct tokens. Cast Astrolabe, it's free because it taps for blue. That should do it. I would like to pay two life, then I can were one, two, three. One, two. Get a sword. Trophy this. They can activate ooze three times, and I can activate sword three times. All right, they don't want to try to navigate it. Nice. It's crushing Faradex. How we do? All right, we're on the play. We can cast turn one Thopter Foundry and then draw another card. Let's keep this. Could be great. <laughs> Could go nowhere fast. We're going to find out soon. It's not often you can actually tap Opal on turn one. Or it's not often you can cast a two drop on turn one. I guess you could tap Opal pretty reasonably if you have another one drop. You get basic island. We gotta get that snow mana in case we draw an astrolabe. Storm is four. Let's go. I'm going to bobble them in their upkeep in case they're a discard deck. Oh, they're a prowess strategy. Galvanic Blast is a good one against them. Hopefully we find some more uh, resources to push our advantage off this, this quick start. Okay, kind of doing it. Zap. I think having another artifact in play is better than having a random Thopter and one less artifact in play here. All right, so of course land is my best draw here. Even a second opal is fine. Just anything that gets the Zerza into play is a good thing for me. It's having a 5-5 five, five blocker to brick the Swift Spear. All right, we got to take two, but it's worth it. Large creature, we can make a bunch of Thopters if we need to. I think it's safe to convert Welding Jar into a Thopter pretty much immediately. I don't expect they have a lot of main deck artifact removal. Alright, 
so one, two, three, four, five. It's Urza time. Come on, sword. All right, I'll just play our island. I'm gonna attack with my creatures. We have to win this game somehow. They suspended Rift Bolt, so if they have another burn spell, they can double blast this Urza. But that's a, a two for one and a, a gain six. So I, I'm cool with that. And we can still just make three Thopters at will. Boros Charm puts me to seven. Rift Bolt puts me to four. And then if they have two bolts, I can make three things in response, I hope. All right, the Sacred Foundry is interesting as that means this is more likely burn that just drew a bunch of Swift Spears than Red Prowess. I think I want to cash Mox Opal in for another Thopter here. Yeah, I'm just I'm just pushing on pressure here. So if I attack with everything, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight. The clock is the same if I don't attack with Urza. And if I attack with Urza and they have a haste creature, then I don't have a blocker. So I'm just gonna attack with my artifacts. Can go to seven at, at will. There's a three damage spell. We're dead to a four damage spell or two three damage spells. Land is good. Searing Blaze, okay. So we're at one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, imagine that. Attacking with Urza last turn would have been lethal for this turn. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, because the Thopter just died, made making construct smaller. So let's cantrip a couple artifacts together. Come on, Urza. Oh, there's one, I guess. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, I'm still gonna play around a haste creature because this still isn't lethal. Just got a fade to draw step, I guess. Draw a land, please, or a goblin guide. Idle on. Fuck. Ugh. Dying for Xaxes again against Burn. Like they have six haste creatures in the deck and four lightning helixes. So I think I played around more things by not attacking with Urza, but we definitely missed lethal because we didn't attack with Urza that turn. I think playing the, the math there, we, we we made the right play, but it just didn't work out. All right, sideboarding the same way we did last time against Burn. Zoom. 
All right, we're on the play. We have the whole combo in hand. I'm going to keep. Yeah, hopefully we can just outmuscle them here. Oh, now you have a goblin guide. All right, that'll save us a damage. I'm going to leave Bobble in play. Because if I need to get this bridge down, I'm going to need to be hellbent for it. Also having a bonus artifact to sacrifice if I have to is nice. The pre-combat spike was weird. So it's smash or bust here for them. Because they still have four cards in their hand, they could still just beat down. Five cards, five times three is 15. I can't gain life that quickly. Alright. Land's probably good. That's three damage I'm not going to take. Though it does turn on Searing Blaze if they somehow have that in their deck still. I'm not going to make a Thopter end step. Because that opens me up to Smash to Smithereens. And. You know, heaven forbid a surgical extraction or some dumb thing we could be playing around. All right, they just packed it up. Had enough. Just the the fair and square. This card, then this card combo was good enough that game. Not making any changes here. Well, we have the whole combo again. We're on the draw this time, which is a big difference. All right, Lava Spike, way better for me than Goblin Guide. I'll take that. Eidolon. Ugh. So I can kill Eidolon. I can Brutality for three modes. But I would have to Shock to do it. So if I don't Shock to do it, then I take two from Eidolon's attack, and it's the same thing. So I guess I just take my medicine here. I can't get the basic Swamp. But yeah, taking two from the attack and taking two to kill it now are the same thing. I don't think I'm going to need Goblin Engineer this game. I definitely want all four of my mana to get up to the Urza. Two Bolts and Helix. I'll take a Bolt because it is more efficient. Uh, collective Brutality feels so good against Burn every single time. Alright, we even drew an artifact to get the combo rolling. Oh, they drew Boros Charm? Okay, so... I'm going to sack Bobble. We know that their hand is just these spells. 
So at 11, their hand can deal six. I don't think there's an individual card in modern that can deal five. Helix and what's the finale here? Skewer. All right, they're dead. that straight line to the combo two games would you like to concede opponent all right okay they scooped it up no reason to play this out if i just gain even like five life i'm definitely gonna win so took one against burn <laughs> we got there all right, we're on the draw against, we don't know what. Sand has Urza, Engineer, two swords is kind of annoying. <laughs> Are we playing against Burn again? My God. Mishra's Bobble's my top card. So, if I play Vista, Bobble, I can check my top card, see if I like it. I don't want Breeding Pool. I'm gonna fetch for Swamp so I can cast Thopter Foundry if I draw it. Let's take a look what they got. Oh good, they're drawing Eidolon. All right, we might be in some trouble here. Many cards in hand now. <laughs> Punished by not fetching red. So I'm gonna just pass and discard Sword of the Meek because that's better than having it in play. I don't take two that way. A spike. All right, so we're taking a million or it's six. War of Invention's my top card. Yeah, we're dead. All right. Crushed by a super quick creature hand out of burn when we were on the draw. All right, so we're familiar with what to do about this at this point. Everything that kills their creatures or gains life comes in. I guess not everything. Trophies are out. Alright, this one kills creatures, draws a bunch of cards. It activates Opal on turn one. There's a lot to like about this hand. Has all our colors available. I'm gonna leave Bobble unpopped, that's why, in case I needed to blast a goblin guide. Mox Opal is my top card. I don't want that card at all. All right, I'm gonna kill that. Now I'm gonna Bobble them. All right, get Opal reactivated. I don't really want them to have idle on here, but even if they have idle on, just War of Invention wins the game, Thopter Foundry wins the game, Collective Brutality is very good. All 
Escalate with two modes. Target my opponent twice. Discard this extra opal. Let's see, are they gonna smash one of my random artifacts in response? Skull crack, okay. That's fine, I guess. Take Boros Charm because it deals more damage. Wow, they have a lot of lands in their hand. I'm going to fetch now so I can play around turning on their Skewer the Critics. If they were to draw one, that is. How about a foundry? All right, so now we're in this spot where just like any payoff gets it. We're at 16. They have two lands in their hand that we know about in the Lightning Helix. Yeah, this is basically like we did what we needed to do to not die. Now we just got to win. Okay. Deal. If they don't smash this to smithereens immediately, they're going to be super dead. And even if they do, I'm going to have a bunch of threats in play and gain a bunch of life. All right, yeah, they that's enough for them. Yeah, what we just saw was an example of, like, you, you need to be able to win the game, but you also, against faster decks, need to not lose the game. And if you draw all win the game cards you might be dead before you get there and if you draw all not lose the game cards you they might stabilize and rebuild so we were fortunate to find a payoff I and mean, we had a million hits like any urza tezzeret thopter foundry or were is just gg and then any i have a lot of cantrips also so there were a lot of live looks but I'm glad we hit one before we were dead. I think we can do better than this hand. Like, I have a turn two goblin engineer that can put sword in the graveyard, but then what? Alright. <laughs> non functional five. This hand has two collective brutalities in it. I'm gonna keep it. It sucks real bad that, uh,. Brutality requires me to discard a bunch of extra cards. All right, so I considered putting one of the brutalities on the bottom because usually one is good enough to clear the path, but Astrolabe is a cantrip. The best thing that can happen to us is if this goblin guy just fills our hand with lands. Of course, that's not what happened. I should cast this now before they idle on me. Bridge from or ensnaring bridge is a pretty sweet combo with mulliganing to five though. And having astrolabe means we can fetch a basic off the scalding tarn. We don't have to take three. All right, come on, goblin guide, feed me a land. War of invention. Alright, so I'm going to get an island. So I can Brutality for minus... I could Brutality for three modes and Hope Bridge is good. I could Brutality for three modes and keep Were. I could also Brutality for three modes, keep another Brutality, or I could just Brutality for two modes. I think I'm going to go for two modes and I'm going to kill Swift Spear and duress them. And I'm going to discard uh, 
I think were. Or is it bridge? It's close. I think bridge is the discard. Because I can kill Goblin Guide next turn. Oh, they have Eidolon. All right. I left Goblin Guide in play because if they have any burn spell, Swift Spear hits for the same amount, and Goblin Guide might refill my hand so to make this brutality better. Or I'm just going to get heinously punished for discarding the bridge. Two modes, minus two and drain mode are my plan now. Now, discarding the bridge was just a hope that they had spells, but the fact that they had creature instead, like it, it's just like, what do they play more of? And the answer is spells. So I can bin a sword here. Unless I just die. Like, I'm at three, whatever. Bin sword, block goblin guide, hope to draw Thopter Foundry, and hope that their two cards in hand don't deal three damage. Which, of course, they do, because they're burn. Yeah, that one just. We got torn apart by the mulligan to five. That. Like, Collective Brutality is a great card, but not when you're already down two cards. Bummer. Alright, round three, or round five. We're on the draw. This is a slow hand, but it has removal, double Urza, and a cantrip. I'm going to keep it. We don't know what we're up against yet. It's probably burn, though, based on how this league has gone. Okay, Blooded Strand is usually not in burn decks. So I'll take that. So I'm probably going to bobble myself. I want to see a little more out of their deck before I bobble. Try to get an idea like are they stone blade? Are they control? But I'm going to bobble myself so I can use this fetch land as a build your own opt. All right, there. Okay, Esper. Good to know. Stoneforge Mystic. I have the answer to that ready. All right, bobble myself. Sword of the Meek. That's not a card I'm interested in. I'm gonna blast this thing now so they can't force of negation it on the on my turn. It's possible I should have fetched Snow Mountain there instead of Steam Vents. I needed red. But now if we draw Astrolabe, we can't cast it. What's my opponent up to over there? They're trying to cast Force of Negation. Because they can't. Alright. Not punished by the Astrolabe fetch. Right, we have a snow mana. This will get Watery Grave. Field of Ruin, whatever. Deck's full of basics, so I don't even care about Field of Ruin. Like, Inventor's Fair is the only thing that I really care about them hitting with that. I guess Breeding Pool would be pretty annoying, too, because I can't 
replace it. I don't have a basic forest. They're lucky I didn't have war there. I've been so sick. Drown catacombs. Wow, that land is really good when you're set up. So they're onto cryptic command mana here. Just gonna shove Urza, see what happens. If they cryptic this one, they might tap out for Batter Skull next turn, thinking they're safe. But. I'm here to jam. Okay. I'm gonna cast this too. This could mess with like them trying to cantrip into answers or like a, any Snapcaster Mage shenanigans. It could also just totally punish me, but we'll see where it goes. It gets Mox Opal closer to turned on, or it turns on Mox Opal as long as this construct survives. It's an artifact to tap for Urza next turn, so I like having this thing in play, even though it seems kind of Marge. They might be thinking about Force of Negation here, because there is that weird pause when I blasted their Stoneforge. Esper Charm, okay, deal. Oh, Esper Charm, huh? Is this what modern has become? The old Mine Rot Divination split card is now main deckable. All right, and they're still in the tank about this Damping Sphere. I bet they are just running all of their internal calculus of, like, does this matter? I can force some negation it, but is it worth two cards? If they do force this thing and it becomes just like him to Turok instead of this weird artifact that may or may not do anything, I'm pretty stoked about that result. They did it! All right. And they pitched Supreme Verdict. Cool. I'll take that trade all day, every day. Come on, slam batter skull. Show me who's boss. Astrolabe, I like it. Those are free. They grow the construct. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Start casting spells. Or playing cards, as it were. What could they flash in to kill Urza? Like two Snapcasters? I'm okay with that if that's what they're gonna do. I have this backup Urza ready. I gotta pressure their life total also. I, I want I wanna get them to a point where they feel like they have to cast this batter skull and then I can just trophy it and go bananas with Urza. They did have a snapcaster mage, but not two. <laughs> Snap Esper charm. That Esper charm has drawn four cards this game, so Could get good. They are under significant pressure though.
If my first Urza flip hits an artifact, I can double flip next turn. Cryptic command to bounce draw on the main phase. That's certainly something. Maybe they have Thoughtseize and their master plan is to... Or Logic Knot. Alright, so Logic Knot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two. All right, just trying to shove Urza. Should be no surprises here. It was weird. It's weird that that just worked. Casting cards. Thopter Foundry. If I could force a negation, this one. It's just another two for one. Or two for zero, really. I just flipped it out of my deck. It wasn't even a card in my hand. And if it resolves, we're just in pressure town. Could also just awaken their spell snares that they've been sitting on. Oh, they had Logic Knot and just let Urza resolve? Okay. Fair enough. Can't pay two. Don't have it. All right, I'm going to put the Breeding Pool into play. I don't care if they Field of Ruin it now because I have Opal and Astrolabe active. That's so weird that they didn't counter Urza when they had the Logic Knot. Don't they know this card is insane? All right, they're dead. Okay, so we want Hand Disruption for sure. This deck looks pretty soft to a Magus of the Moon actually. Tezzeret, Tireless Tracker. I like all of those. And then Collector Brutality. I might want one just for the duress mode. That's in the maybe pile. So cards that are not great. <laughs> Damping Sphere, even though they did Force of Negation it. Nile Spellbomb. I don't think I want that just for Snapcaster Mage. I'm going to cut Opal in these grindy matchups as usual. Chromatic Star is coming out because it gets bricked by basically everything. Pyrite Spell Bomb can come out. Pything Needle is good against Planeswalkers. Goblin Engineer gets punished by Rest in Peace and Surgical, so I'm going to cut that. I think I'm going to go to zero Goblins actually and bring in an extra trophy. Does that make any sense? I could leave in one goblin and cut one chromatic star. I think I like that. I could cut welding jar or ensnaring bridge. Yeah, it, if I don't know that Bridge is particularly reliable against the Cryptic Command deck. And then they're more likely to bounce or counter my artifacts than destroy them. Alright, so maybe I'll keep in two Engineers and board out these cards. Though, 
I'm gonna bring Bridge back in because using Bridge to protect Tezzeret just for like one turn is usually good enough to win. I'm gonna keep this. Rock solid mana, draws a bunch of cards. I have Tireless Tracker, which is a card I'm very excited to cast. Like I said at the beginning of the, the video, Tireless Tracker is on my watch list. I'm not sure if it's actually good or if I actually want it. So here is a matchup where ex this is exactly where it would shine if it's ever going to. If they cast Stoneforge here, I can't Galv Blast it. Okay, cool. Ooh, we got the full surprise coming. So what I was saying about Stoneforge is that if they cast it on their turn two on the play, then they can Force of Negation to protect it my turn two on the draw. And if I wait until their upkeep, they can just vial in the batter skull in response. So that's not even good. Okay, I'm gonna wait a turn and then I can Thoughtseize and Magus the Moon in the same turn. Like they could like snap opt here, I guess, if they want. Or they could Esper Charm, as usual. Nice. Alright, so they have a bunch of basic lands this game that they did not have last game. So, I'm going to Thought Seize. Probably still just going to cast Magus. Well, at least make their mana weird, even if they can still cast spells. I could have played my land to play around Mana Leak. But that wouldn't help against Logic Knot. Alright, Logic Knot for three. I guess I could have made him exile one more card, but... Whatever. I was probably trying to take a counter spell anyway. So they spent a counter spell on Thought Seize. Here comes Magus to the Moon, which they might just be able to remove if they can't counter it. But either way, it's going to get an answer out of them. And then I can cast Tireless Tracker with a Fetch Land ready to get two clues immediately next turn. All right, let's see if this is any good. It's in play. They opted to the bottom. Oh, hello, Urza. Oh, I should probably not attack because Snapcaster Mage is in their deck. Oh, that doesn't matter. I can Galvanic, Galvanic Blast it. Bang. Nice. Baited. All right, so this fetch land can't fetch because of my own Magus, but it is still gonna make a clue. Whoa, game taken over by Tireless Tracker. That was pretty sweet, unexpectedly effective. So that was a 3-2. We, uh, we beat Burn, we lost to Burn, we punted a game that if we had thought a little better, we would have won against Burn. So played against Burn three times. And then we beat the two non-Burn decks. The two, uh, there was a Stoneforge, there were two Stoneforge decks, one Abzan, one Esper. So if Burn is going to be three out of five matches in a league, you might want to reconfigure your sideboard a little bit, maybe battle at the bridge. That's a card people have played. Maybe Damping Sphere should be in the board. As 
Like I said in my last video, Damping Sphere is only good in a few matchups, but those matchups happen to be our worst matchups. Like Storm and Tron are the super, super shitty matchups. But this card is just a brick a lot of the time. So deciding if you want this in your main deck, and then if your local meta is full of burn, maybe cut the tracker for a battle at the bridge. But tracker was really good. Just took over that game that we were just about to play through. So that's the league. 3-2. Could have been 4-1. Uh, pretty good result. Thanks for checking it out. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Bosch and Roll and smash the subscribe button in YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions you want to talk about the video, I respond to most of my comments and also hit me up on Twitter anytime. Talk about magic and stuff. I'll see you next time.